Hey, welcome to EMS Office Hours. This is Jim Hoffman. These are the Monday Minutes. Um, today, guys, we are going to go into some more of the quick study help. We're talking about obstetrical emergencies today, guys. And we're going to kind of talk some of the key elements here, right? Key elements on things like anatomy, uh, a normal pregnancy, the history, all right, tips that are kind of different when we talk about OB emergencies. And we're going to talk about physical exams and some complications, right, that you might expect to see. Now, before we go into all this, of course, I always like to ask and tell you why I think this is important, right? It's not just for exams. It's not just quick study tips for an exam. It's also great for building your knowledge base, all right? So in addition to getting those key points, right, those key elements of what you're going to see on your exam and, and, and what you might see when you're studying to, things to look out for, it's going to build your knowledge base. It's going to help you make better decisions when you're out there in the field, right, when you're treating and transporting your patients. And it's going to help you better interact with other EMS professionals. And it's going to help you make your reports much more concise, right? Much more uh, medical friendly, right? Because you're going to know what you're writing about. So let's get into this, guys, right? Talk about anatomy a little bit. But before we do, I want to just point out, right? Delivery, right? OBGYN, we get them, you know, get these calls all the time, right? But really, it's a natural process, right? It's usually not complicated. It's normal, right? Not a lot of stuff you're going to do. You're going to really support the, the infant, support the mother, okay? And just remember, there's two patients here. But now, for me, on a side note, I personally feel that while delivery is a natural process, it's a natural thing, an, a delivery out in the field, right, to me is an emergency. To me, is not normal, right? It's not normal for people to have babies in the back of an ambulance, okay? That's my take on it, right? So... That's my little thing, but it still can be natural, right? So remember the two patients. Talk about some of the anatomy here real quick, guys. Talk about the ovaries. Those produce the eggs, the estrogen, and the uh, progesterone, right? Fallopian tubes, that's the passageway between the ovaries and the uterus. The uterus, that's hollow, pear-shaped. It's a muscular organ, and this is where the fetus develops, and the cervix. This is inferior to narrow neck of the uterus. All right. Vagina, that's the actual birth canal. The perineum, that's between the urethra and the anus. Okay. Sometimes you'll have to, you know, that can tear during delivery. Okay. You got to be careful. That's why I talk about explosive deliveries, things like that. Got to watch out for that type of stuff. Placenta. This is that part where it all happens, right, for the, for, the, for the growing fetus, right? Exchanges oxygen, nourishment from the mother, okay, and takes out that CO2 and, and waste products from the fetus, okay? The umbilical cord, this attaches to the fetus and the placenta, all right? It has the two arteries and one vein in the umbilical cord. The amniotic sac... This contains actually about 50 to um, 1,000 milliliters of amniotic fluid, all right? Usually if it does break, a lot of times we'll see that happen, right? And that's why they call 911, because the amniotic fluid, the sac is broken. But the fluid should be clear, so keep that in mind, okay? And fetus, of course, that's the unborn uh, infant inside uh, the mother, okay? So... I want to talk a little bit now about the normal pregnancy, all right? Just some highlights here so that you'll know when you see some changes going on with, with uh, uh, the mother that they're normal for them, okay? Full-term infant, usually 40 weeks or 280 days, all right? Uh, you want to find out less menstrual period, okay? Um, the respiratory rate for pregnant women usually is going to be increased in both depth and rate. Tidal volume, right? The amount of, of, of breathing in, in and out, okay? 
um, is going to be uh, different as well. Total blood volume is going to increase by 40 to 50 percent. The patient's resting heart rate will probably increase between 10, 10 and 20 beats per minute. The blood pressure is going to drop between 10 to 15 mill, millimeters per, per um, uh, mercury, okay? So keep that in mind. So there might be normal, but it's going to drop a little bit, all right? Um, what's the exti estimated date of uh, confinement or the due date, okay? Uh, you want to find, find out what that is, but the EDC... It stands for the estimated date of confinement, which is also equal to the due date. So if you see that EDC, you know what that means. Okay. Now keep in mind it's three trimesters. Okay. Each one is about 13 weeks. Right. And keep in mind the first trimester is going to be the most common time for uh, the mother to have a spontaneous abortion or a miscarriage. Okay. And find out the uh, GPA, right? The gravita, para, or miscarriages and abortions. All right, important to know this type of stuff during any normal pregnancy. Now, some of this we talked about. I want to give you a little bit about the history here. It's going to repeat some, some of what I just said, but kind of just to kind of reinforce some of these key elements here, right? So, in addition to your sample, Right, your your past medical history, your pertinent medical, uh, you know, uh, uh, history itself. Right, you want to know basically what the current health of the mom is. Right, asking things like recent Ill illnesses, recent injuries, um, fevers, things like that. Are they getting prenatal prenatal care? All right, do they are they using any drugs? Okay. It's important to know this type of stuff because using certain drugs, you might be kind of prepared for the infant coming out and needing resuscitation, right? Kind of anticipating that type of stuff. All right, this goes back to what we talked about, why this stuff is important, right? Being a good clinician, understanding certain things that might trigger a warning to you, right? Um, what was their first day of their last menstrual period? Right, kind of help you anticipate how pregnant they actually are. Sometimes patients do not know, right? What's the delivery date or that due date, that e EDC we talked about, okay? Do they have any previous pregnancies and deliveries, right? The, 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 the gravita and the para, any, were there any complications, right? Do they have any, any miscarriages? Were there a C-section? Was it uh, premature? All that type of stuff, all right? And find out, guys, if they're having contractions, when did the contraction start and how far apart are they? Do they have they been keeping track? If not, you, of course, need to keep track of this stuff when it happens. Tell them. Let them know. When you start having a contraction, let me know. And then you can, can, you can time it and you can see how far apart they are. Okay? And ask them as well, is, is there any other pain any place else? All right? Um, do you see any bleeding? Okay, from from the from the, uh, the 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 vaginal canal, any any bleeding coming out there? Okay, and you might have to look for crowning, especially if they're telling you they have a desire to push, right? Or contractions are very close together. Okay, or the water has broke. You might want to go ahead and check for crowning. You don't want any surprises going to the hospital, right? Management guys, listen. Again, going back to what we talked about before, right, a lot of it is just supportive. Oxygen, IV, position the patient on the left side to avoid that hypotensive uh, syndrome should they get it, right? They get a supine hypotensive syndrome you might have heard about, okay? So management is mainly supportive, especially for the mom, unless you start seeing other things that, that we'll talk about. We'll talk about complications, right? Same thing for the, for the infant, all right? So let's talk about complications a little bit here. I'm not going to go into too much on all of this stuff, guys, because, again, these are quick study tips, things that I hope that when you hear them, you'll either know what I'm talking about or it will motivate you to crack open that textbook, 
and focus in on the key elements that maybe you're not getting here on these quick tips. So some complications, diabetes, a lot of times you get that, that, that gestational diabetes going on, okay? Um, that can actually happen, okay? So we talk about gestational diabetes um, or even pre-existing diabetes, right? Things to, that you're going to want to know that can complicate the pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy, right? We hear about that a lot. Uh, again, I just mentioned supine hypotensive syndrome, right? Lay the patient on their left side, and this is kind of avoid the uterus from sort of, uh, you know, pressing down on that inferior vena cava, okay? Um, also, talk about preeclampsia, right? Um, this is going to see things like hypertension, fluid retention, um, a, a, a patient will appear puffy, have excessive weight gain, headache, okay, things like that. Um, look out for their blood pressure, okay? They might be mildly hypertensive with like 140 over 90, or they might be more severely hypertensive, 160 over 110, all right? Um, pretty much a rise of uh, 20 systolic and 10 diastolic, okay? But again, think about what their previous history is, what else is going on, to kind of guide you along the way of what might actually be going on with the patient, okay? Um, and eclampsia. This is a big deal, right? Patient might be seizing, right? So do your ABCs, your oxygen, your IV, and treat the patient according to your guidelines, right? You want to stop that seizing, get, try to get that blood pressure, right, volume, mag sulfate, depending upon your local guidelines of what you have in your toolbox to be able to treat uh, these patients, okay? Um, and finally, guys, pregnancy-induced hypertension, all right? It's a little different from eclampsia, a little different from, from uh, uh, preeclampsia, right? Um, but this is when you're going to have 30 systolic to 15 diastolic above the patient's normal baseline, all right? Uh, so really, you know, you get a, a pregnant female, if their blood pressure is 140 over 90, somewhere in those ranges, consider them to be hypertensive until approved otherwise. There might not be a life-threatening emergency, but something to think about, pass it on, depending upon, of course, how the patient is presenting and what they might be complaining about. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Okay, next time I'm going to talk more about OB emergencies, going to get into trauma during pregnancy. I actually did a great uh, presentation about that a while back with an RN, talk about trauma and pregnancy and all. Uh, so I always like kind of revisiting that because it's, it's an important thing and we don't all often see it. So I think it's good to sort of remind ourselves about that. Okay, so we're going to talk about that next time. All right, in the meantime, guys, engage with me on social media. I do a little something different on all the different channels, on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, and, and Instagram. All right, go follow me. I'm at EMS Safe on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm at Facebook.com forward slash EMS Professional, okay, over on Facebook. So join me there. I do live videos and pictures and stuff in my little personal life. I think it's just cool stuff that we can engage with each other with. All right, so go ahead and do that. I'd love to see you as one of my followers or whatever you call it, and any of these Instagrammers and stuff like that, okay? Love to see you on those channels visiting with me there. All right, if you have any minutes of your own, suggestions, love to see them. Love to hear about them so I can put them on another Monday Minutes. You can email to me at contact at emsofficehours.com. Don't forget to visit emsofficehours.com. Check out some previous episodes of these Monday Minutes. Check out the podcast there as well. Okay? And engage me on the blog as well. Don't want to go on social media. You're not really a Facebooker. You don't like all that social media stuff. I get it. Some people are like that. That's cool. Engage me on the blog, man. EMSOfficeHours.com. Post your comments there as well. You want to just do it private and engage with me and have a conversation via email? Absolutely. Again, Jot it down on the emails. Contact at emsofficehours.com. All right, guys, that's it. 
Uh, as always, uh, I'm going to end it here. I'm Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.